has to speak to us is through dreams. And some of us, we don't even have time to dream because we do morning shift and we do evening shift. So there's no time to even sleep alone to receive dreams. But when you are fasting and you dream, you sleep and you are dreaming and you are seeing all these um, dreams, it is a warning sign. I'm telling somebody that don't think all the bad dreams you are having is bad dreaming itself. You dreamt that somebody was chasing you. Uh, you have to, some of you, you have to keep on having those kind of dreams because that's the only way God is able to reveal to you the intentions of the plans of the enemy against you so that when you wake up from bed, you will fast, you will pray and cancel those dreams because if you don't, those dreams will come to pass. And I know many prominent people whose life were wasted just because they didn't understand their dreams. A typical example was uh, Mouse Monroe. He had a dream about death, about death and a change of uh, baton, but he was interpreting it for his country. But when you dream, first apply it to yourself, even if you dream as somebody was dead. Because you saw death in the dream, first you have to come to yourself. Lord, if there's any spirit of death coming against me or any of my family members, I cancel it. And now, Lord, I stand in the gap for this person I saw in my dream who was dead, and I cancel it. But sometimes we just, oh, I saw this person, uh, a car hit this person in my dream. All you may know is that it was you who the car was hitting. But they, gave, they put somebody's face in so that to deceive you so that you don't do nothing about it. So even when you're having dreams about people and the dream is bad, first cover yourself. Cover yourself. Cancel it from your life and then intercede for whoever you dreamt concerning. So I'm just letting somebody know that it's okay when you're having those attacks or nightmares when you're fasting. You just have to know that there's a battle going on and you are trying to come out of the bondage. Please, if you don't fight, some of you, if you don't learn to fight, the Pharaoh will keep you in Egypt for a long time. And stop stop running away. Stop running away. Because some of you, you, you refused to fight last year. That's why you are still having the same problem. You want somebody to do it for you. You have to learn to fight. Confront your confrontation. Kill your killers. Destroy your destroyers. Because any time you are running from the battle, you will need to fight it another day. And sometimes the energy and the strength you have today, you may not have it tomorrow. When God told Saul to go and kill everybody in a certain nation, he went in and spared some people. And those people he spared, one of their children grew up and he became Haman. He became Haman, who was coming back after the children of Israel to commit, commit a holocaust. And it was also Mordecai. Mordecai was also a descendant of Saul. So what his great-grandfather did not do, now Mordecai had to do it. And the enemy who was Haman, that Saul also left. The king, Agag, that person also rose up to fight. So please, if you don't fight some enemies and demons and witchcraft and powers in your family, your children may have to grow up to deal with the same generational curse who is keeping people not to stay in marriage, who is keeping people for not succeeding in life, who is keeping people down because nobody is confronting the strong man. But God has anointed you at times such as this. He has armed you with information. He has armed you. If your mom probably knew about spiritual warfare, maybe you will not be going through what you are going through. Our parents didn't know that much. They were going to church, loving on God, serving God, but probably they didn't even engage in spiritual warfare. And some of us, our parents even were not Christians. They were into witchcraft and idol worship. So they even tied us even the more. Now you are being spiritually lazy. You don't want to fight, but you want the problem to be lifted. Now what you are creating is that re remember that our christianity is even now stronger than our uh, our children because our children are coming into a christianity which is uh washed down washed down christianity motivational christianity christianity which is not that strong meaning we are even much stronger in our faith than our children and our children may not even know the family history and they don't care to know so if you don't fight some battles and you leave it for them they will come and they will be ignorant about what is going on and the enemy will keep on repeating the cycles for a long time. But some of us, we have knowledge, but we are refusing to fight.
we are refusing to fight. I pray that tonight or this year you will fight a good fight of faith. Because when Moses was consistent in putting pressure on Pharaoh, eventually Pharaoh gave in. If you keep on fighting, you win. You will come out. You will break through. And that cycle is broken from you, your children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren. Please don't leave the battle to your next, the next generation. God is counting on somebody. God is counting on somebody. A whole one witch, a whole one wizard, a whole evil idol or demon in the family can keep everybody in the family down. Everybody, nobody will lift it up their head. Nobody will succeed. Nobody will live past 50. Nobody will come out without having cancer. And it is only one demon and one witch who is controlling the whole family. And then nobody's, nobody comes against their champion. The Bible makes us to understand that uh, in, in, in uh, 1 Samuel about David and Goliath. And the Bible says that Goliath was the champion, the Philistine champion. Do you know who a champion is? A champion is somebody who wins battle. And the Bible says that nobody could contest with him or fight him. Everybody was afraid. And as long as they were afraid, he was intimidating them. And he said, if I overcome you, you all everybody will be in, in, in bondage. So until you also overcome the champion of over your family, the champion over your life, that champion will keep everybody, you and everybody under you, in slavery. What demon is championing your life? Is it the spirit of singleness? Is it a spirit husband? Is it a witch, a wizard? Is it a spirit of defeat, failure and stagnation? Is it, is it a spirit of delay? Is it a spirit of cancer? What demon? What demon is championing over your family? That woman cannot marry. Women cannot stay in marriage. That people cannot pass the exams. People cannot graduate from school. What demon is championing people that even though you are very educated, but there's nothing to talk about because your, your education and your profession or your career does not reflect your life because you are struggling like every other person and yet very educated very brilliant and even have a good job and yet still you are a beggar why because there's a champion of poverty which rules in the family you have not overcome it and it doesn't matter you can be a lawyer you can be a doctor and still be struggling financially because the champion if the champion is poverty and you don't fight it you'll be a a, a, a doctor who is broke, a doctor in debt, a doctor in bankruptcy, because the spirit of poverty is still championing you. Beautiful lady, you love the Lord, but the champion of singleness and inability to marry is fighting your life. If you don't champion the spirit of separation, divorce and separation, which came after your grandmother and destroyed their marriage, came after your mom and father and destroyed their marriage, that champion will also destroy your marriage because you don't want to fight. Your parents didn't fight it. Your grandparents, they had no idea because they were into idol worship. Who is, going to, who is going to overcome the champion? Goliath, who is going to rise up like David and say, you come against me with charms, with spears, with sorcery, with divination, with curses, but I come against you in the name of the Lord of hosts. I will bring you down and overcome you. So precious one, this year, it's, it's a new year. A lady I spoke to was telling me she was from Ethiopia, and she was telling me how she goes to an Orthodox, Orthodox, Orthodox church. I have no problem with Orthodox church, but she's not having an Orthodox problem. She's having some serious spiritual, satanic witchcraft cases and witchcraft problems. So, but she wants to still keep her Orthodox. And your orthodox is not helping you to deal with this spiritual witchcraft, which is destroying your whole entire family, including yourself. But they want to keep the tradition of orthodox. And if the orthodox does not teach you how to fast, does not teach you how to pray, does not teach you how to fight these demons in your mother's house and father's house, which is killing and destroying family members, then what sense is it is when you say, I'm an orthodox? But the problem you're having is not an orthodox problem. It is a demonic and the church you are going does not arm you and prepare you to face that problem. So you will die in your octodos. You just have to wake up and say, no, I got to change some things. I can't stay for this thing to destroy me. I must, I must find solution and do something different. 
because my orthodox background my catholic background even my how do you call it um adventist or baptist background good church they preach the gospel and whatever it is but when it comes to dealing with some strongholds in my life i need to identify myself with some serious fasting and praying and warfare ministries i'm not saying just mine but any ministry that will help you to fast to pray and to be aggressive to fight back you must and and that is the only way things will change and that's why when people come to me i tell them please come on the prayer line it's not just about me praying for you i want you to learn how to start fighting i want you to learn how to become strong spiritually because when you start fast, fasting and praying and reading the word and begin to engage in warfare you begin to break through and i know so many people have come on the prayer line and after fasting praying they begin to call me back but okay i'm getting results i'm seeing results changes are happening breakthroughs are coming yes i'm seeing it i'm seeing it Yes, because all this while, there's a demon, there's a witchcraft that was holding you down and you were not fighting back. So this year, may it be your resolution to fight. And the more you fight, the more you will possess possessions. You will possess your possession. So that's one thing I wanted to educate some of you about your dreams. That it's okay when you have dreams, but don't allow yourself to be defeated. Don't allow yourself to be dreaming and see yourself running away from your enemies. Um, your enemies overcoming you, your enemies fighting you, um, killing you. No, 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 those are no, those are bad dreams. To a new dream, you should see yourself pursuing after your enemies. You see your, you, you should see yourself killing your enemies, destroying your enemies. Then you know that spiritually I am stronger than my enemies. But if up to now you are still dreaming and the witches are putting you to flight, it means that there is something wrong with your spirit man. There's something wrong. You, you are not spiritually sound. You are not spiritually strong. You are a, a lightweight and you are dealing with heavyweight powers in your family or around you. And that is why I'm here to help you to be spiritually heavyweight. And that's why we encourage you. When we say fast, you, you are helping yourself to be strong. When we say pray, you are helping yourself to be spiritually strong. When we say read the, the, the Bible, we are help, you are helping yourself to be strong. When we say be holy, we are, you are helping yourself to be spiritually strong so that when your enemies come against you, they will know that they are no match for you. You are, they are, no, you, you are no match for them. You will defeat them and they can't even stand you. That is why we fast. That's why we pray. That's why we are deep into the word and deep into living right and walking by faith. When you start applying these principles, you will take back every grounds the devil has stolen. Don't, don't be dreaming and say, I dreamt and the devil was pursuing me and I was running away. Every time you are running away, you are leaving a location for your enemies to occupy. Because when you dreamt, you were running, meaning there was a place you should have been possessing. But because you were running away from that place, when you run away from that place, even if they don't catch you, guess what? They take that position. That position is occupied. They've taken your territory. But you must stand your grounds and rather chase them out. Chase them out of your marriage. Chase them out of your finances. Chase them out of your children's life. That is you making advancement in dreams because spiritually you are growing. And then you realize that you cannot be easily suffocated and go through sleep paralysis. The reason why some people go through sleep paralysis is because spiritually, soulishly, you are very weak. Your soul is so weak. Witches are able to summon your souls and do all sort of witchcraft on you because you are lightweight. You are, you, 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 are, you are not prayerful. You don't fast. You are not full of the word. You are not full of faith. When you are that kind of Christian, then you become a, what is called a blind witch. A blind witch simply means any person whose soul can easily be captured and arrested and imprisoned and turned into a slave in the coven of the witches. So when we go into the covens of the witches, their, their high places, their secret meeting places, you see so many people in the prison cells of the witches. These are not witches, but they are found in the, as, as prisoners. In the, why? Because they are not spiritually strong. And many came on in this ministry when they are um, how do you call it? Blind witches. Because witches had taken them captives. Here I teach you to come out of the cage. Set yourself free. And never allow a witch to bewitch you and put you back in their cage. When you are in a... Uh,
Join us every Tuesday at 10 p.m. Eastern Time, Friday 11 p.m. Eastern Time. I'm going to leave the information at the bottom of this broadcast. Join 